uh, difficult task. Uh, first, first of all, I want to, to uh, thank David Goldberg and Dragan Kurdit for their invitation, for having organized such, a, such an event, which was a necessary and uh, urgent event, I would say. And, and I thank them for having invited me, uh, associated me to, to this event. Uh, before I, I start, I would like to leave as, as, it's, as a suspended exerg uh, one, two, or three uh, questions, which I'm going to leave suspended. Uh, first question, who would confess today, I am a racist? Who would confess this? Uh, we know that people are behaving as racist, but they would not, in most of the case, acknowledge that they are racist. That they, they, they wouldn't say, I am a racist. <coughs> now, who would confess that he, who would uh, 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 claim that he has never been touched, <coughs> contaminated with or by some at least virtual uh, racism. First question. Of course, this question will be immediately connected with uh, Etienne's uh, conclusion about post-racism. What will come next? After the end of racism, is there something, uh, some other hidden or metonymic form of racism uh, waiting uh, uh, for the future? We know that racism is a plastic formation. It's essentially plastic. That is, it may take forms, metonymic forms, uh, in an endless way. So who, who could really be sure that no racism has ever touched him and that even after the, the end of the so-called declared racism, there would be no racism waiting for, uh, waiting for us? Second uh, question. Uh, then, the question of racism and anti-Semitism. Of course, I was uh, very much interested by what Etienne told us. And I'm, I'm going first to, to propose some general remarks, uh, and I'm afraid trivial remarks. Uh, 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 and then, in the second phase, I will try to, uh, not to object, not even to respond, but to echo some of the uh, Etienne Baribas' uh, uh, statements. Uh, so what about this, this couple of concepts, racism and anti-Semitism? Why do we, especially in France, constantly associate them? <coughs> we have movement against racism and anti-Semitism. We know that we cannot separate the two, and we know that we cannot identify one with the other. What's, what is this, this strange couple? And what is hidden in this necessity not to separate them and not to homogenize uh, them? And uh, in a moment, I'll try to, uh, to uh, encounter what uh, Etienne Baribar told us uh, about this question a moment, uh, moment ago. Now, of course, uh, the, the, this event is all the more, uh, um, let's say, necessary and urgent here that Today we, we uh, have to do with, uh, and today, I mean today, today uh, in, in, at war, we have to do with new forms of associations with a number of things which are not racism. Nationalism is not racism. Uh, 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 xenophobia is not racism. Uh, 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 there are a lot of things which are close to racism which are not racism. And, and we have to account for this uh, proximity and for the rigorous distinction between all these concepts. So the, the, this event is all the more necessary that we have to do today with new uh, formations of racism and something, something else. So I must, if you don't mind, um, tell you a few things about my own, if it's not too indecent, my own uh, investment in this, in this uh, question of, of racism. 
some of you, some of my friends here, know that I was born in a country which was not a country. It was a colonized country, which was not a colonized country, which was considered a part of France, in which, one, in my generation, all sorts of racisms were uh, at work in all directions. Uh, uh, everyone could, in Algeria, was, when I was born, everyone could at the same time uh, um, claim that he or she was a victim of racism and at the same time participate in some racism. And it's true for the French-born French citizens or coming from France. It was true for, for the Algerians, whether they spoke Arabic or <coughs> Barbarian. It was true for Italians, Span Span Spanish people, uh, Maltese, and of course it was true for the, the Jews who uh, were at some point granted, as, as uh, it, it was recalled uh, by uh, Guylaine Jarre this morning, were granted uh, French citizenship in 1870 and then were deprived, when I was a child, deprived from their citizenship. <coughs> during the war, during the, the, the Nazi occupation of, of France. And at the time, uh, they were, of course, victims of anti-Semitism, but not as citizens. They were, they were non-citizens. They were called, we were called, indigenous Jews. Indigenous Jews, that is, non-citizens, non, uh, belonging to no people, no, no, no Algerian nation, no French nation. And, and they were, of course, uh, um, uh, victims of anti-Semitism on the part of the Algerians to some extent and to a much larger, uh, larger extent on the part of, of the French uh, people and the French uh, government. So I was very sensitive, of course, uh, to these, uh, um, uh, these diverse racisms. While I must confess that in my own milieu, the Jewish community were behaving in, a, in some racist way toward sometimes the Algerian people, the Arabs, and some, sometimes toward the French people. And uh, I, I must, when I was a child, I was participating in this vaguely, vague racism uh, um, toward uh, everyone, hmm? toward everyone. Uh, and even toward the, the French people, we were considered, uh, I still keep something of, uh, let's say, uh, 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 vaguely ironic and, and, and suspicious about everything French. So, though I wouldn't swear that I, I, I was totally intact, uh, although, although, of course, having suffered so much, uh, not, not as much as in, as in Europe, but other, I think suffered so much. I was very sensitive to the, this question of uh, uh, irreducible racism uh, without really knowing what it is and what the difference could be between anti-Semitism and racism. Now, having said this, I must um, um, confess that when Dragan uh, uh, told me something about this project and the title of this uh, conference, that is, Trace with this pan, uh, uh, T or A, <laughs> deconstruction and race. And first of all, I thought that it was a little artificial, at least in the title, perhaps a bad pun. <laughs> and, and, and then I realized that it was perhaps more justified, and I would like to tell you why I think it's justified. It's not such a, a, a bad or artificial pun. Th thank you, Sean. Uh, <laughs> I want to save you. <laughs> I'm relieved. Yeah. You're not French, but <laughs> it saves you. Uh, of course, I'm not here uh, to, to, uh, to, to answer for deconstruction uh, and I will be totally unable to do so. And for the concept of trace, although I have uh, worked with these words a lot, uh, but I have the, the strange feeling of having sp uh, spoken or written very little thematically 
on race and racism in a deconstructive mode. I devoted some texts uh, who are ex ex uh, thematically uh, uh, directed in, the, uh, um, uh, in that way. That is the text on Mandela, admiration of Mandela, the la uh, racism last word, on, on state racism, which is a very specific uh, topic. And I'll come back to this question of state, ra what, what this concept of state racism <coughs> might mean. But otherwise, I didn't address directly the question of race and racism, uh, even, even in the text that, uh, that uh, Baliba mentioned uh, on, on Geschlecht, uh, it was not a text on, on the racism. Of course, uh, the race was there, but... Uh, so wh why, uh, why was it so? Uh, in a certain way, I would argue that deconstruction, if I were so silent on this issue, it was because deconstruction is through and through, and I wouldn't say this artificially, the deconstruction of racism. Uh, that is, the deconstruction of, first, I would distinguish here two layers. First, deconstruction of the, uh, not the permanent conditions of possibility of racism, but the, the long sequence, the long historical sequence uh, of the conditions of possibility of what we call racism in its strict modern sense. So I would start with distinguishing, distinguishing the conditions of possibility of racism. And these conditions of possibility, which are philosophical through and through, are, of course, they cover uh, uh, centuries. They, they are one with the history of philosophy, I would say. And I would say a little more uh, in a moment. And then, then we have the strict, narrow, modern concept of racism, uh, associated with, let's say, uh, a number of things that, that uh, Etienne recalled, uh, 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 history of colonialism, uh, 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 pseudo-scientific knowledge on biology and genetics, and a certain history of the nation state, of the modern nation state. That racism in the strict sense is a 19th century, 20th century ph phenomenon. So we have to distinguish between these two layers. And I would argue that deconstruction, uh, first of all, tries to uh, um, uh, analyze, or deconstruct if you want, the general conditions for racism in general. And then, in the, in the same historical way, to articulate this general layer with its narrow uh, specification in the form of a modern, strict, strictly speaking, uh, um, uh, racism. Now, before going a little further in this direction, uh, let me ask two or three questions, abstract questions, in terms of semantics and logics, logic. Uh, this morning, we, uh, uh, Senator Gilman started with this provocative uh, talk. We talk, talk, talk. We shouldn't uh, simply talk. We should do something. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I agree. Uh, we should do something and not only talk. But uh, first, racism depends on talking, mm -hmm. on language. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I don't trust the idea, the philosophical uh, uh, topos, according to which man is a speaking animal and that uh, everything depends on this uh, uh, faculty of man. But nevertheless, uh, a non-speaking animal would never be, if there is such a thing, and uh, I have a number of reservations on this topic, a non-speaking animal would never be a racist. A racist, a racist. So the... the uh, Racism is a speech act, depends on the speech act which does something. So it, it, it's, it's talkative. Uh, it, it says something, it insults, uh, objectifies, denounces, and, and it, it's a, a, a speech act. But, and this is the, the strange uh, situation, it's at the same time absolutely speechless. It's speaking and 
uh, the way uh, Etienne recalled, it depends on the desire of, for knowledge. You want to know, to analyze, and to denounce, of course, to insult, but also to, to determine, to define, to philosophize, and to know. It's the, the will to knowledge. But at the same time, and simultaneously, that, that's one of the aporias. It, it is a speechless uh, act. The racist, when you ask a, a racist, what is a race? How do you, how do you identify this? And, and the theme of the invisibility came back again and again this morning. The, the racist would say, well, there is something I cannot tell. There is, I, I feel or I smell, but I cannot define uh, uh, um, what a race or the uh, racial feature is. It's not simply color, it's not uh, this or that or that, because they know after having checked this that there is no scientific content to the concept of race. So they know that finally uh, the, the racist behavior is speechless. It, it's rhetorically, it's talkative, it, it's uh, eloquent, and at the same time, speechless. Desire to knowledge and, and confession not to know anything about what is at stake. Uh, uh, now, now, the other strange structure from the point of view of semantics and logic, even formal logic, is that you, usually we think that racism is a concept which is formed, is shaped after the word or the concept of race. We're supposed to know what race, know what race is, and racism is a way of dealing with race. That is, of uh, 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 inventing or, 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 or cultivating a hierarchy and to say oh, this race is superior to this one, I, 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 I belong to, to the superior race, uh, you belong to an inferior, and so on. Racism would be, built, would be built as a specification of race. We know what race is, and then we go from race to racism. In fact, it's the other way around. It's the other way around. The, we know that the concept of race has no content, no philosophical, no scientific <coughs> content. So it's racism which constructs or produces the concept of race. So we have to go from racism to race. The race is a, an, an artificial product of what we call racism. And we don't know what racism is, and, but we know that it's the condition of the concept, the so-called concept of race, what is supposed to, respond, to correspond to the, the name uh, race. So the concept of race doesn't, doesn't come first. Uh, and that's why, that's why racism survives all the, uh, the, uh, the denunciations of the non-knowledge, of the, non the pseudo-biological or genetic knowledge, which was, in the, in, especially in the 19th century, was supposed to, to, to found, to ground uh, uh, racism. Now, why was deconstruction, uh, I address the question of deconstruction, which is it's in the title, so uh, that's my duty. Why? is deconstruction the, from the very beginning and through and through implicitly or explicitly the deconstruction of the roots of racism. I say the general conditions of possibility of any racism. Uh, that is a history of racism. Deconstruction is it's not only historical, it's also a deconstruction of, the, of a certain concept of history, but it's also a history. A history of the what makes racism possible. Why? First, and then I, 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 I justify once more the, the reference, the, the bad pun of trace race, because <laughs> there is no thing present as such as, uh, as, as, a, uh, as, as, a, as a race. The race is something else, invisible, spectral, the trace of the other, the trace 
of the otherness of the another otherness of the other, not simply otherness, but another otherness of the other, which never presents itself as such. It's not color. It's not uh, intelligence. It's not. It, it's just some thing which doesn't exist, which never presents itself. It's an alibi. It's a spectral alibi. So it's it's a trace, and, and the concept of trace seems to be appropriate to uh, to to refer to precisely race, what is called by the racists, race. Uh, we know that the target of racism, although there can be, and this has been recalled by uh, David uh, this afternoon, there can be a lot of collusions of, of uh, hybridization, of hybridization grafts, grafts and so on, but we know that the target of racism is not the political enemy, it's not a, a, a citizen, it's not the, uh, it's not the foreigner, it's not the stranger. Uh, the, the target is some, someone else that, that escapes any category of the political, of the, uh, 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 it's not the, uh, someone belonging to another nation. That's why racism is not nationalism, although they often merge, they are often uh, uh, are one with another, but it's not nationalism. Okay? So it's, it's someone else, and uh, it has nothing to do with, with religion either, in principle, in principle. It's a repressed trace, and of course we cannot, we should not here, uh, 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 let's say, uh, avoid psychoanalysis. Uh, I mean, I mean that's the, 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 this is a, 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 the place where the um, psychoanalytic, psychoanalytical problematic is indispensable, not, not the way it is constituted, not as an uh, orthodox uh, Freudian heritage, but at least the psychoanalytical question is, has to be politicized here and introduced in an unavoidable way. Second, second reason why the construction has to do with the very conditions of possibility of racism. Not, not the permanent conditions of possibility, but the large conditions of possibility, uh, 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 as large as, let's say, uh, 25 centuries, much larger than the modern strict phenomenon of racism. First, because racism relies on a, a, a set of concepts of a couple of concepts which constitute philosophy as such. The, the, the opposition between physis and, that is, nature. Not nature in the late sense, but physis, fuein, as opposed to nomos, to in, the institution, the law, as opposed to, to thesis, the nomos, again, the, 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 uh, what is posed as an institution, to, as opposed to techne. Uh, the, the, the racist discourse always ref tries to naturalize what is not natural. Hmm? And it, it, it relies on the uh, uh, um, uh, presumed naturality. If you, uh, if you deprive uh, uh, racist discourse from its reference to nature, hmm? be it biological, genetic, or, or whatever, there is no foundation anymore for any racist uh, discourse. So uh, as soon as deconstruction dismantles or questions uh, this binary opposition between physis and its others, nomos, techne, thesis, then the grounds of, of racism are, uh, 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 in, uh, are in ruins. Uh, uh, then, second, the concept of the reference to the origin and the filiation. From the very beginning, uh, deconstruction had tried to, let's say, complicate the question of origin, of simple origin and, 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 and filiation, and even genealogy. Uh, at, uh, for some time, uh, I tried to uh, use this term genealogy in the way Nietzsche or Foucault did, but finally I, I realized that this concept of genealogy was itself uh, suspect because, because of its reference to origin, filiation, genetics, so many, so many alleged 
uh, uh, arguments of, of, of racism. And especially, it's especially the case when uh, in, in, in the, in the um, more recent works, uh, I paid attention to the concept of brotherhood, to the concept of fraternity, mm -hmm. uh, which is so decisive, not only in Arabic cultures, but also in Greek culture. Mm -hmm. the, the privilege granted to the brother, not to the sister, but to the brother, with all its, its uh, natural, national, uh, everything which relates to birth, to the birthplace, sometimes to the autochthony. Mm -hmm. So everything which I uh, directed against, let's say, this privilege of fraternity, even within democratic discourse, was in principle a response, a critical response to a possible racism. As, as soon as this might sound uh, a little provocative or a little uh, outrageous, but as soon as you grant a privilege to the brother, racism is, uh, is uh, ready to appear. I, I'm nothing against brothers, of course. <laughs> but, but when the concept, the, the concept of brother, brotherhood becomes a political agenda, then you can be sure that some racism is at work, in, at least potentially, in, in the, in the uh, discourse. Uh, uh, now, one of the paradoxes in the denunciation of, and here I'm already echoing or, or encountering uh, some of the very rich remarks that uh, Etienne made a moment ago uh, about the humanist discourse, the anthropology and humanism. Um, one of the paradoxes today of the, the very universal denunciation of, almost universal denunciation of geneticism, of biologism, and, and racism is considered a biologism or a geneticism, although it's not simply that, is that um, in order to um, criticize eugenism or geneticism or biologism, one reintroduces some um, um, couple of concepts which do the opposite of what they're supposed to do. Let me give you the example, the massive example of the, the cloning. You say cloning? There is a, this is a point of agreement between Bush and Chirac, at least. Right? They, <laughs> both, they both, and uh, it's a general consensus, they condemn cloning, okay? Uh, and, and they want this condemnation to be inscribed in, in the international law. I have nothing, uh, I'm, I'm not in favor of, of cloning. I'm not for the development of <coughs> armies of clones in various, uh, that's not the problem. I'm just suspicious about the axiomatics of this denunciation of cloning. Uh, this denunciation of cloning as genetic reproduction of the same, uh, <coughs> without precisely uh, uh, desire of two sexes, the, the act of love, and so on and so forth. This denunciation reintroduces the idea that two, that clones, by reproducing in a purely identical way uh, the, their model, so to speak, would simply uh, give birth to identical individuals. There would be, the culture would not do anything. <coughs> Education would not do anything. It, 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 would simply, it would be simply the monstrous repetition of the, the cell or, or the program uh, uh, which uh, was cloned. And this is under a, a humanist uh, 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 alibi, the very reproduction of these genetic geneticists or biologists and virtually racist uh, discourse. That's, the, that's where some humanism and some racism are one. And it's often the case. We, if we follow this thread, we could see a number of cases in which Racism presents itself as a humanism, or humanism is open to, uh, to, to racism. Now, 
these are the very, very general uh, conditions of possibility in, phil in philosophy and, and as philosophy, because the distinction between physics and its others structures the whole, the whole history of philosophy, as well as the distinction between the intellect and, and, and the senses, between activity and passivity, and so on and so forth. Once you dismantle this opposition, you, you dismantle everything in philosophy. So it's, it's, it's philosophy as the general uh, 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 structure, uh, uh, the general condition of possibility of racism. Now, if we come to racism stricto sensu, that is, the modern specification of this general uh, 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 structure. Uh, we have to acknowledge um, a paradox that it's when uh, uh, these conditions, these general conditions of possibility are threatened, that is, when the autochthony, when the stability of the community when uh, um, uh, the, the, let's say the normal, normative way of reproduction are threatened, that uh, this threat produces racism, exacerbates racism. Because we know that now uh, uh, populations will be Displaced, we know that uh, because of colonization, because of a number of modern phenomena, that uh, the stability of the communities, the uh, of the identities, will be threatened precisely by all these uh, grafts and and and, and uh, hybridiza hybridizations and displacement of population and uh, and technolo new technologies and so on and so forth. And it's a reactive. It's a reactive response to this new era that uh, develops uh, racism in its modern form. And it has to do with a crisis in, in the, it, with the birth and the crisis of the nation state. The, um, uh, let me, um, since I just named the nation state, let me say something about precisely the, the example of state racism that I took when I addressed the question of racism in uh, la, uh, racism last word in, in South Africa. On the one hand, uh, apartheid was the last uh, state racism in the world. That is, after the Second World War, uh, racism was inscribed in the Constitution, and and that was apparently the last example. But remember two or three things. First, that uh, the system of apartheid wanted to liberate the, the, the black communities to, to, uh, by putting themselves in, in Bandustan in, in their own, in their own uh, space. They said, well, they will be we will be free, they will be free, they, 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 will, culti they will have their own culture. It, it was a, uh, alleged, uh, it was uh, in a, uh, allegedly a, a way of uh, liberating uh, the, the, other, the others. On the second point, it was a, an ideology or a theology of the elected people. We know that the first the, 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 track, the, 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 the first pioneers in South Africa uh, were self-conscious of themselves as the real Hebrews, the real Hebrew elected people, as Calvinist theologians. And there is something similar in the United States. The, uh, that this this uh, analogy between, let's say, uh, uh, the, the white South Africans, uh, the Hebrew elected people, and the Americans, there is some, something uh, I, I want to identify them, something analogous in the, in the, the reference to some election, some theological uh, 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 election. Now, to say that um, apartheid was the last state racism as such was only a, a uh, way of presenting things it was literally true, but it was not 
essentially true, because in a certain way, every racism tends to be a state racism. That is, to, to, uh, that's why it is political. In principle, that, that's one of the aporias. In principle, racism is not political, strictly speaking. It's not a political phenomenon. It, it, it claims to be uh, apolitical or metapolitical, but in fact, it, it looks for the political conditions in which it could, uh, let's say, perform itself. And so um, um, every racism tries to, um, uh, to build the political conditions of its, uh, um, of its uh, existence, so to speak. That is, the state conditions. Politics here means the state. Of course, we should not identify the political with the state, and, and Carl Schmitt warns us not to do so, but he also says that, in fact, in fact the, major, the, the, the main uh, form of the political is the, the state, the form uh, uh, of the state. So in a certain way, each time uh, 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 racism uh, presents itself, uh, not as racism, because no racism presents itself as such, but presents itself with his, uh, its own agenda, it has some political goal that is some uh, uh, state agenda, agenda of, uh, on the level of, of, the, of the state. So in a certain way, uh, all, every racism tends to be a state, uh, state racism. I remember uh, in, in France, uh, in, the, in, the, in the 70s, there was a debate around a professor, perhaps Etienne remembers this, uh, Boutang, who was well known for having been a right-wing uh, extremist, anti-Semitic, who was uh, expelled from, from the, 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 the system of education. For, he was a professor of philosophy. And then he was reinstalled, and there was a debate. Well, I won't, uh, I won't uh, uh, go back to this. But I attacked him, and, and, he, and, he, and he, he responded in, uh, in the newspaper, saying that he had never been anti-Semitic himself in the, in the racist sense. He said, my doctrine was state anti-Semitism, anti-Semitism d'etat, by which he meant I had nothing against uh, Jews as a race, nothing against Jews as a religion, but against Jews as French citizens. They shouldn't be French citizens. So it, it's, it's just political. And, and uh, of course, that's, that's the point where if we, if we uh, try to define what the political is and cannot avoid a number of permanent features, namely the reference to the state as located, with a location, and uh, with a territory, the police with the territory, which, which refers also, to, which implies also autochtony and so on and so forth. Uh, then the secularization of, let's say, a theological concept. Uh, we follow Schmidt on that point, uh, who, who uh, 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 tried to demonstrate that all our political concepts were theological concepts in their secularized fashion. If it is true, to, to the extent that it is true, every racism as political is theological political through and through. And that's why we have, despite the rigor of the concept of racism, which is neither political nor religious, uh, uh, and nor even biological, nevertheless, we have the mixture the artificial mixture of this non-political with the political, of this non-religious with the religious, uh, of this non-biological with the biological. And, and all these, that's the, what I would call the plasticity of the concept. The concept, it, there is no rigorous concept of race, there is no rigorous concept of racism, but there is this plasticity uh, for which we have to account. Uh, 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 that's interesting to see. I, I, I refer to Schmidt because he's, a, he's an interesting case. Uh, 
He, would, he wouldn't say that the enemy, the political, Guinan uh, 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 referred to the enemy, uh, the enemy. He, he, Schmidt would say that the enemy as political should never be uh, uh, an object of hatred, then should never be a, a, a racial enemy as purely political. And nevertheless, not only was uh, Schmidt himself uh, an anti-Semite, but that doesn't matter for the, 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 the inner content of the theory. But how could he account for the identification of an, of an enemy without the reference to ethnicity, nationality, and then since it is difficult to dissociate race from ethnicity, nationality, birth, birthplace, filiation, blood, and so on and so forth, it was difficult for him to avoid this racial uh, uh, essence of, of the enemy, uh, even if he didn't never uh, uh, confess this. Uh, this. This morning, just one word, and then I'll, I'll try to, to to say something in relation, in direct relation to what Etienne uh, said. This morning, uh, um, uh, Senator Gilman referred to the question of the mother and father. He says the, uh, question, the, the, the question is the question of the father who is. Uh, uh, um, we cannot address the question of racism without the question of affiliation, of course, birthplace, blood. Mm -hmm. uh, have to be a citizen either by blood or by, by, by uh, soil. And of course, the, if you want to know, if we claim, if we have to know uh, uh, what birth is and who was born from whom, we rely, or they rely, traditionally, to the mother. And you can follow this thread, especially in the Jewish tradition, where it's the mother who defines the belonging. And so because, and the argument goes that way, and we can find this argument everywhere, even in Freud, and I tried to criticize Freud from that point of view, because we think we're sure who the mother is, okay? Whereas the father, we don't know. The father is, as Joyce would say, a, a uh, fiction. A, 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 what is the word? A? Mystical. 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 No, no, there is another word. Uh, uh, it's a, a, a legal fiction. A legal fiction. The father. <laughs> the, the, the father is a legal fiction. The mother is real. We know, we see, we touch, we have a, a, an immediate perception of who the mother is whereas the father is just the, the conclusion of a reasoning that is a legal, <laughs> a legal fiction. Uh, well, now, we know today, but we should have known eternally that we don't know who the mother is. And now we know scientifically that it's impossible, that a, a child may have more than one mother. And the mother is not simply the one who, uh, who gives birth one day. Uh, this one may be the receiver, the receiver of the of the sperm uh, or the uh, well, you know what I'm talking about. So, uh, we, the mother is as a legal fiction as the father. So the concept of birth is the very concept of birth, which is today, uh, 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 let's say, if not undecidable, at least problematic. And it's because of things like that. I could I could mention a number of such things, of things like that, that racism. Is exacerbated, exacerbated, because the, the the foundations of the knowledge of of the birth, of the blood, of the filiation, and, uh, pushes in this direction. We become racist by reaction uh, 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 against this phenomenon of non-knowledge and non decidability and not belonging and so on and so forth. So it's a reactive. Uh, the modernity of racism. And its exasperation today is a reaction to precisely what threatens the general permanent condition of 
of uh, uh, alleged race or alleged, alleged uh, uh, racism. So that's why I would say one should at the same time politicize the ra racism, that is, look for its political structure and as far as possible analyze the, the social, economic, political conditions of uh, res, res, racist phenomenon. We should politicize as, as much as possible. And at the same time, at the same time, that's an aporia or a double bind, <laughs> at the same time, take into account that <coughs> racism in itself is apolitical. It's a, an apolitical, uh, uh, endless, uh, 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 inexhaustible uh, resource. Uh, now, let me, uh, do, do I speak too much? No, no, go ahead. No? Uh, You're explaining well why we put the traces in the title. You're explaining very well why we put traces in the titles. So I'm, I'm, grateful, I'm grateful, your, your, <laughs> I'm grateful your for your yeah. I'm just justifying a pun. Uh, uh, uh. And remember, I'm introducing you at another conference in a few days, so... <laughs> Now, I, I, I totally agree with what uh, Etienne said. I will, I will simply um, uh, add some footnotes or, or, or echo in my, my own way what he, what he, what he said. Uh, first, ab about the, the constructivist, or the, the constructed uh, notion of race, of, of racism. When, he, when you referred, Etienne, to uh, 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 this constructivist revolution, and when you refer to Sartre, uh, uh, when you say uh, in quasi-Sartre in terms, uh, by generalizing what Sartre explained concerning the constitution of the Jew through the hostile and stigmatizing gaze of the others, races exist only in as much as process of rationalization take place, and so on and so forth. We, we know that uh, uh, that was one of the theses of, of Sartre in his reflections on the Jewish question, and that to, for, to him, the Jew was only the one who is only what a, a, a non-Jew considers a Jew. Why uh, does the non-Jew choose this one rather than this one? On the one hand. Uh, uh, and and, and, and uh, on the other hand, Sartre confessed that he knew nothing about Judaism, about the, the inner definition of, of Jewishness by itself. And he tried to distinguish between authentic Jews and inauthentic Jews. And the way he defined uh, uh, inauthentic Jews was, I would say without being provocative, and without suspecting South of being a real racist, is nevertheless racist way, I would say. When he says that the, the inauthentic Jew is the one who tries to erase the, uh, the specific character of Jewishness by being universalist, humanist, rationalist, cosmopolitist, and so on. And then, uh, then what remains that the, the authentic Jews Authentic Jews must be uh, irrationalist, uh, uh, nationalist, and, and so on and so forth. And I find this really, really uh, uh, um, uh, d disturbing. Uh, you have seen that we have both been attacked in an Egyptian uh, journal uh, some time ago as uh, uh, typical representatives of the legacy of South. You haven't seen that? <laughs> no. That's interesting. No. Uh, I thought you had seen that. No. No, I, I... It's a very, it's a very violent uh, attack. <laughs> I come just after you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> where, where aren't we attacked? I wanted to, to start my... <laughs> I wanted to start my, 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 my... No, no, I wanted to start my response. I just forgot. By thanking you, you all, all of you, and especially our, our hosts, for your hospitality, because the gallophobic racism today in this country uh, <laughs> is, is, is reaches such a, a degree that 
not here. No, not here. Not here. That's why. That, <laughs> that's why I'm so I'm so grateful. But we, we should analyze the, 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 the racist forms of, of some of these attacks against, against the, the French uh, people in the French government today, uh, the, the uh, fried free, uh, freedom, <laughs> freedom fries and so Fried freedom. <laughs> Is that racist or not? I, I leave you to... Uh, uh, now, I, I, I totally agree about what you said uh, uh, con concerning the will to knowledge, that racism is a, in a certain way what Freud would describe as a epistemophilic uh, uh, drive. Uh, they want to, to know and they want to, to uh, it's not simply uh, ignorance or, or, or obscurantism. It is an obscurantism. It is an obscurantism in the form of a, an epistemophilic. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, that's that's what makes deconstruction difficult, because deconstruction is an attempt to know also and, 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 to, and, to, and to denounce this uh, obscurantism, but to denounce also a certain way of, uh, 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 a certain desire of knowledge, the way a desire of knowledge uh, uh, borrows. So I totally agree also with what you said about the, uh, um, and the, the strange relationship between uh, man and animal, uh, the question of animality is, of course, central to this, this uh, uh, issue. Uh, but I, I'm not sure I would simply uh, uh, distinguish in a such a uh, sharp way election and selection. At some point you said, you said it's, there are, these are two heterogeneous you know, logics. And I think at some point they they, 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 are, uh, they, they go together. They go along, to, they get along together. Uh, of course, I, I, I won't avoid the example of, of the State of Israel uh, again, in, in which you have a sort of uh, state racism. Of course, they, 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 wouldn't, they wouldn't call this that way. But the fact is that uh, anyone who is supposed to be born from a um, Jewish mother, whatever his faith uh, is uh, alive or not, uh, anyone born from a Jewish mother is considered uh, 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 an Israeli citizen as, as soon as he or she lands in, in this country. Mm -hmm. And with the complex issue of the Arab, uh, 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 Arab Israeli, uh, Israeli Arabs. Or, uh, so, um, and here you have, you have of course, the, the mixture of election and, and, and selection. And, and I think it's not an example among, among others because it, it crosses all the, the history of, of anti-Semitism and racism. Uh, there is, of course, we, we can easily, uh, I say this uh, as a Jew, uh, which frees me from, from some, uh, some uh, suspicions, uh, that there, there are a lot of let's say, anti-Semitic gestures within uh, 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 Jewish communities and within uh, 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 Israeli uh, politics and so on and so forth. So, and, and, and here the question of biology and, and genealogy and genetics is not, is not simply uh, um, uh, absent. Um, another point I would, I would have liked to, di to discuss with you was the question of colonialism, imperialism, and, and anti-Semitism. You said at some point, colonial, therefore imperialistic or imperial. And here, and it's a very, a very, um, uh, very uh, intriguing issue. Because on the one hand, if you take the example of the United States, which is a colony, in which the anti-colonialist discourse is prevailing. The, the, the major ideology of this country is anti-colonialist anti from the very beginning, for, for, for reasons that we know, because it's, it's, a, it's, a, former, it's a former colony. But at, at the same time, uh, being anti-colonialist, it is, in a certain way, imp imperialistic. And uh, the racism 
which develops in this country is not, uh, is not um, let's say, uh, 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 colonial in a certain way. Um, uh, perhaps, uh, if the roots in reference to the Indians, yes, perhaps. But in, in fact, it's, in, it's an, a different sort of, 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 of racism of link uh, between racism and imperialism, and I was struck by, by what uh, um, David Goldberg said about what is going on today, in which a new form of nationalism, <coughs> imperialist nationalism, free from, I would say, free, free from colonialism, strictly speaking. The United States are not, is not a colonialist country. Uh, the, the colonialism is, is something of the past, from the point of view. But it's, it's a new nationalism, patriotism. It's the most, the most patri patriotic nationalist country among the modern democracies. Uh, uh, it's imperialistic. And, and, and the, the racism is a strange phenomenon because the unity of the nation, this morning we have had uh, uh, wonderful papers about this phenomenon in which the unity of the nation, including blacks and and the black soldiers who, who are now fighting in, in Iraq and, and the, the blacks who, after the September 11th, were considered good, good uh, um, uh, citizens. Uh, you remember uh, Bush's statements on this subject. So it's a strange and specific mixture of anti-colonialist discourse, imperialistic, imperialistic, or perhaps the word empire, you know, it's under discussion today, is not, is not appropriate anymore. But something more of an imperialism than a colonialism is at work, uh, inventing new forms of worldwide racism. But the racism itself doesn't look like what it looked like uh, yesterday. And it is this new form that we have to, to account for and to, and to analyze. Now, um, uh, just a final word, because I, I, I realize I am too, too, too long. Uh, the question about the future. Uh, uh, in a certain way, what I tried, perhaps I didn't succeed in, in demonstrating this, but what I tried to, to say was that racism as a modern form, in its modern strict form, started with the end of racism. With the end of racism. It's, the beginning is the end. It's because the conditions of, the conditions of a, let's say, a, uh, uh, triumphant racism were obsolete because of what was happening geopolitically and teletechnologically and, and, and etc. Cetera, et cetera. Because of that, racism developed. So it developed uh, starting from the end. It's because it was a reaction to the end. So uh, racism is, is, has been, from the very beginning, a, a post-racism. From the very beginning, it started as, as a post-racism. And this can be followed from uh, Kant's text on the history of humanity and on the concept of race up to, up to now. So we, we started with a post-racism. So what will come next? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. What, what, uh, what I'm almost sure of is that with or without the name racism, perhaps the name will disappear. Or the, the, no one can subscribe to the name racism. No one. Does, does. During the, before the, the Second World War, and perhaps a little after, there were people, very s small in number, who would say, well, I, I uh, claim that I'm a racist. It's, it's no, no more possible today. So, so perhaps the word racism will disappear uh, that with the end of race and racism. No scientific content, no, no justification, but what racism is a symptom of will continue. It will continue uh, endlessly in, in new forms. And our duty, if, if you have a, a political and a, and a, and a, and a, and a metapolitical duty, is just to, to uh, <coughs> identify these new forms of racism without the name. I, was, I must confess that in the, uh, uh, in the, let's say, the everyday uh, common discourse, 
I was often, as a philosopher, trying to be rigorous. <laughs> I was shocked by the, the use one makes of the word racist. As soon as you exclude someone, you say, you're a racist, okay? You, you, uh, even if there is no reference to race, say, well, uh, you, you are against uh, homosexuals, that's racism. You are against uh, uh, this or that, so, uh, that's racism. So racism became a synonym for repression, exclusion, uh, uh, the evil, you know, the evil. So there will be new forms of this. Now I, I understand what the logic of this, this looseness of the word uh, uh, represents. So there will be uh, endlessly new forms of what racism in its strict sense represents, and we have to be vigilant uh, in front of them. Thank you. Thank you very much.